Floss Tube, I'm Nicole and this is Dee Dee's Floss Tube episode 90. So let's get started. where you're watching from thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me to see what I've been up to in my cross stitch if you're a returning viewer or a new viewer and you've yet to subscribe make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not gonna miss out on any of my future uploads all right so today we are here for my cross stitch so hence why it's called floss tube and some other things as well I won't be keeping you too long today because I haven't got much stitching done because I have been knuckling down and getting the magazine it's off to the proofreaders thank goodness it has gone to the proofreader so now all I have to do is wait to see if I've got to edit anything but I hopefully fingers crossed it's not too much because there's always something that you end up missing all right so as I said we are here for our cross stitch I have also worked on some other things we'll talk a bit, little bit about what's happening on the channel and what tutorials have gone up or are coming up so yeah it's um not been a very productive stitchy week although I have managed to do a stitch with me uh, crafting with DD so I've been working on my EPP I have also done a diamond painting this week as well and you can see all of those videos they'll be all linked up down below and they're all over my channel so if you just go to the home page or to the latest videos you'll see the ones that have gone up all right so let's get stuck into what I've been working on um I'll just start with my snow village for those that don't join me for a um, the stitch with me I've got a little bit more done in and I have made a promise to all the lovelies that watch me on a Monday that I will have peppermint parlor finished by the time I come and we will be starting on the third uh, chart in that one so I don't have much to go I've got to do the chimney finish off the snow put some of the I'm just looking for my little thing it must be still up there somewhere um, so I've still got to put the chimney on the house I've got to put the tree in two candy canes and finish off the snow and then there's some of these little green leafy things down the bottom as well um, and then I just have to do the back stitch so oh, fingers crossed that I have it done by Monday I said that I was going to have it done and I'm going to endeavor to get it done but I might not get the back stitch done. We'll just have to play that by ear. All right, the next one that I worked on was another Christmas one, and this is one from uh, Little House Needleworks instead of Country Cottage Needleworks, and it is Farmhouse Christmas. I have been wanting to do this for so long, and I just kept putting it off and putting it off, and then I did one block, and I didn't like the fabric that I picked. You couldn't see the white on it, and even this one here, so the fabric that I've chose you can see it but only just so basically I'm just using the called for colors except I've swapped out bamboo for um uh B5200 I think I swapped it out for I don't have my threads in front of me they're still in the lounge room but that's what it's going to look like when it's finished I am framing this one up I am not turning it into a cushion it is still in the frame and I've done some of the border and I'm working on the first one so that's what it looks like close up and I actually got a fair bit in um I've last time you seen this I had just done the brown bit of the border so I have let me just put something behind that so you can see the white a bit clearer so I've put in the white and the green leafy bits and all of that in the last week because uh, last Friday when I pulled it out after floss tube I'd only done the brown so I got a fair bit done in that not as much as I would have liked I would have liked to at least had the barn done but as I said I've been working um, quite a few late nights just trying to get the um, magazine all sorted and and whatnot so I'm gonna leave that in the uh, Q snap so that is a Q snap that I've made for it okay so I've gone down to, to Bunnings and um, and I haven't made the other one for Snow Village yet but I've made my Q snap for it so if you want to see that the I'll card that um, tutorial up in the corner for you and the link will be down below and um, I'll probably even put it on the end card as well because it is quite an easy tutorial and you'll never have to worry about trying to find the right size and piecing everything together all right the next one and I've only worked on three this week so the next one that I've worked on and I haven't worked on this one for so long 
and I just love it so much. Now, um, it is the blue flower, the night walk down. So that's what it looks like when it's going to be finished. And last time you've seen this, I had the word night and that flower up the top and part of the border done. Um, not very much at all, actually, in that. So I have got a little bit more done in this one. So you can see there, I've got the white. I've done a bit of this flower. I've come down with the stem and that's all I've done. So yeah again not very much probably about a couple of hours in that so I've still got um a fair chunk to do in the tail of the peacock so you can see there there's a lot of detail in that um in that tail but isn't it beautiful this really reminds me this chart I love the blue flower stuff I've got a ton of her charts in there and there's so many more that I want to get but I've I've sort of stopped because I need to get them stitched um and a lot of the stuff that I've got in there is her acorn series, her little acorn pillow, pillows. And I've got the sleeping bee, the quilted bee. I've started the sleeping bee. I've been, um, I'm doing that on 40 count. And yeah, so I started this for my birthday, I think, a couple of years ago. Maybe a year ago. No, about a couple of years ago because I haven't worked on this for a while. But I've pulled it out and I'm going to be working on that for... I just love it so much. And it just, like I said, it reminds me of cruel embroidery. Uh, that, so I want to get it done. And it looks awesome. Like, I'm loving it, what it looks like. So you can see there. It's the, and the colours. And I'm not using the called for colours in this. This was using... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. This was just using um, Classic Colour Works, Gentle Arts, and Weeks Dye Works. I'm not using any of that. I'm using my CXC threads. And they're quite... Um, like, if you look at that white, that's only 10 stitch. Like, I haven't even done the full cross yet, so you can see there. So, from a distance, it actually, like, I could get away with doing the peacock in, but I want to do the cross, obviously. But um, you can see that it's got some really nice coverage. You can see up the top there. Um, that's all CXC thread, really nice coverage. And I've decided that I'm not going to fill in. I believe that the borders, where is it? I've put it all away. I believe the border's got white in, in it. I'm actually going to leave that because the purple's coming through really nicely and I'm going to leave the corners as well. So that purple fabric will just pop through because purple's my favourite colour. Um, so yeah, so that'll just pop through. I may still end up changing my mind. I'll see where, what happens when I get to the end, but for the most part, I'm not, I, I've decided that I'm not doing that. Um, and I may end up pulling out, um, I'll see if I can maybe I've got a, cut, a jump thread on the back in the black and I'm not really impressed because I can see it but I don't, yeah I don't know what I'm going to do there so yeah but anyway oh, it's just that one time like it's just going from the top of the end down to the the dot on the eye and I get I don't know whether I would see it once because I like to put um, interfacing on the back of mine. So I don't know whether I'll end up seeing it or not. Worst case scenario is I may snip it and just put a dab of uh, fray check on it to stop it from coming apart. That'll just glue it in place. But that, as I said, it's not going to be a long one today. That is all the cross stitch that I've worked on. But I've actually started some other projects. Okay, so if you've been on the channel this week, you would know that I have put up a number of videos of just different crafting stuff, but I've started a new series called, oops, nearly knocked the light over. I've started a new series called Slow Stitching Saturday. Obviously, it goes up on a Saturday and it is all involving like slow stitching. So that could mean that we do um, English paper piecing or we might do some embroidery or, you know, just slow stitching or we might make something completely by hand. Um, and it's just a, a way you could, there'll be days where there'll be, or weeks where there'll be, you can just follow along with something that I'm working on, or there'll be patterns for you so you can, um, make the project as well. And, uh, yeah, so all that sort of stuff. It is very much in its infancy. We only had the first one last week, last weekend. So we're going in for our second one this weekend and we are working on borrow. So borrow is a Japanese form of mending. And then we do a sashiko run stitch now I haven't put any of the running stitch in because I'm doing this all on camera so you can see how to do it when to do it why to do it which way to do it and all that sort of stuff I am no expert but it is a lot of fun 
And last week's um, video got a great response. So thank you to all of those lovelies that have actually watched it, left me comments, or messaged me because I did send it to a couple of people in Messenger, the video, and they've messaged me back and said it was absolutely fabulous. They loved it. So I thought I'd show it here today. Now, as I said, I've done no more than what I've done last week. And again, this video will be linked up down below and on the end cards. You can go and suss that out and um, you can join in the fun this week. So I'm going to lift it up. But this is what my table runner looks like so far. Now, um, I'm, I am adding a border onto the outside of it in a, a greenish color, maybe, um, maybe even a bone color. We're not too sure yet, but that is on my calico base fabric at this point. And, um, yeah, so next on the, the next time you see this will be tomorrow, um, which is Saturday here in Australia. So it'll be Friday if you're watching from the U S um, it will be going up first thing in the morning. Cause I'm actually going, I've, I've got something on tomorrow morning, uh, yeah, tomorrow morning. So basically, um, what I will do, it, it will actually go up tonight, but it'll, it'll, it'll go live tomorrow morning, but I'm filming it, um, today. So, um, yeah, so basically that way you will, um, get the video, you'll be able to see it and we're going to be starting to do some stitching. Now I'm still a bit indecisive. I don't know whether, I think I'm going to do cream thread with this. I'm so indecisive. I'm not sure whether I want to do it in the white or like the white looks brilliant against the indigo blues and all the rest of it, but I think the cream is going to look better against this. So leave me a comment down below and let me know whether you think I should do cream or white thread. Then after we've done all the stitching for that, and I'm going to endeavor to have that all that stitching done because it's just basic running stitch. So I will endeavor to have that um, all done by episode three, and then we'll end up finishing off our table runner. All right, so if you want to join in with that, you don't need any specialty tools or anything like that. You just need all your general sewing supplies. However, if you're going to um, do it and you don't have any sashiko thread, I advise you to get some sashiko thread because it is a strong thread. If you don't have any of that, you can use a fine crochet cotton or a pearl eight um, a crochet cotton in a 12 weight and um, you can use a pearl 8 or 12 in um, your pearl cotton. So if you've got that and it doesn't have to be white, it doesn't have to be cream and it doesn't have to be Japanese linens. But anyway, go and have a look at that video. As I said, I'll cut it up. Um, I'll link it down below and I'll cut it at the end and you can go and have a look and I'll just go through talking a little bit. Now, if you still don't have any of that, you can use your embroidery floss, but don't strand it um, because it'll just weaken it and you don't want it to um go to all that trouble and then not be able to do it i don't recommend that you use embroidery floss it is a last ditch minute like the last thing that you can use okay go for your pearl cottons or anything like that and just suss it up all right what else have i done this week this week i have been doing a lot for the magazine as i said but i've also been doing some filming for tutorials and everything and one of the tutorials that went up this week was the humble it's another cozy and it is the plate cozy so this basically holds your plate goes into the microwave and you can pull it out without burning your fingers now i had a few questions from people asking about square plates now if you've got a square plate obviously it'll have corners like this just turn it and turn your plate to the darts and what will happen is then your square parts will just sit in there nicely it'll still work it's still the same principle and you'll still have room to pick it up and um, carry it out of your because um, your flat edge will end up against these because your corners will end up in the darts so you'll still be able to use it again that is on the channel so it takes no time at all once you've got the hang of it the only thing that I will stress here as I stress in the video you really need to have 100% cotton for everything in your bobbin your top thread your fabrics and your batting if you don't have any cotton batting, you can use uh, Pellon's, uh, is it Pellon? Yeah, Pellon's Wrap and Zap. I have a, a lot of trouble getting that here um, and I don't want to pay for postage if I can't get it in my local area uh, when I've got 100% cotton batting here anyway. So I just use that and just make sure that your batting doesn't have little bits and pieces in it. All right, so 
The next thing that I started this week, like I'm starting all the things, I'm just getting right into my crafting at the moment. And I've talked about this in the past where I wanted to do a crochet blanket for Mia. Now I started doing it and I was doing a uh, double crochet and I was just doing rows. I didn't like it. It was boring. Didn't hold my attention. Um, we've all worked out now that I need to start many things and possibly never finish any of them. That's okay. I have a daughter that is very much into craft and she's told me that she will, she will find people to finish them off and stuff like that. But ages and ages ago, I was talking about, uh, doing a crochet blanket and it was doing all the different stitches. Now I have the complete book of crochet stitch designs, 500 classic and original patterns. So what I figured I'd do is I would do start from the beginning of the book and just work my way through. So when you start in the beginning of the book, you're starting with single crochet. Um, now this is an American book, so it is American terminology. And I'm trying to think what a single crochet is. I think it's a half treble. Is it? No, that's a double. I don't know. Anyway, this is not an Australian or English um, or UK crochet book this is an american crochet book so it has single crochet double crochet yada 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 so because americans use for those that don't know americans use different terminology for crochet than what uk and australia do so for the most part australians follow what the uk do because we have the same um measuring system and all that sort of stuff our, our money's different but our measuring system is generally the same the US have their own terminology for everything <laughs> from what I can gather. So if you're following a pattern and you're Australian and you come across something and it's got double crochet in it, it is actually an American pattern. If it has trebles, half trebles and other ones in it, then that's the terminology, the verbal ter terminology. That is UK Australian. Okay. I'm not too sure about Europe. I think Europe follows the UK as well. But in saying that, the crochet symbols are the same. It doesn't matter which way. Okay, so I, I don't know how you work that out. This is what I've learned. I don't know. I, I would imagine that they would be different if you're using different verbal ter terminology. But from what I can find, and it says in this book as well, about being global, like it is um, universal is what they call it. Uh, let me just find it. Okay, so international crochet symbols, okay, is what it is. So we've got that here. So that's what the symbols look like. Now, my understanding from this book and from what I've read, across the board, the symbols are the same. Just verbally, American will say, uh, American patterns will say um, double crochet, single crochet, and I'm just using those two because that's the most common what people hear. And UK and Australia will use the terms treble and half trebles. Okay? All right. All right. <laughs> We're all good now. <laughs> we all understand that because it took me a while. <laughs> and I actually had a friend that um, she didn't know. Like she was in her late 50s and she did not because she had learned um, from – Obviously, someone that had done American crochet got because a lot of the magazines we get here are American as well. So, whoever taught her, and she was in her late fifties before she knew that there was actually a difference, and it was through me that she found that out because I was doing um, crochet with a lady that was teaching the Australian way, and then I was getting confused because I didn't realize that the, you know, like, and she goes, "Oh no, no, there's American terminology, and then there's the Australian terminology and um, UK terminology," and I'm like. Gee, make it hard. And um, yeah, and so it was in her late 50s before she even realized that there was two different things. And then she goes, that makes a lot of sense because she was doing something and it turned out so different because she was like, she couldn't understand the pattern. She wasn't sure what it was. And yeah, there was a whole conversation that we had about it. And it was, she was like so shocked that she had got that, but, and she'd been crocheting for a long time. And it wasn't until her late 50s that she realized that there was American and UK. It happens. All right. So um, this is the book that I, as I was saying, this is the book that has all the bits and pieces in it. So what I've decided to do is from front cover to back cover, I am doing all the stitches. So I started with single crochet. Now you'll have to, <laughs> this, I don't know what I was doing. I, I was tired at the time, so I probably shouldn't have done it. Like, So I started 
um, I started doing the um, the single crochet one. So I did that, and then um, I'd, sorry, the double crochet one I was doing, and I was doing it in green, and I'd done a fair bit, so I didn't like it, so I pulled it all apart, and I balled up the wool, and so I didn't waste it. So now I've got that. But the thing is that I've done it and I'm not a great crocheter and so um it's a little bit how you go on the yarn so these blocks are a little bit but at the end of the day it's just gonna be a blanket and it's just so I can practice and get to know what I'm doing so this single crochet one so these are how big the blocks are going to be so they're um 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters I think they measure about four four and a half inches around that okay so that's the single crochet one there's a couple of mistakes in it um but that is more because the wool is very fuzzy now because I've already um crocheted with it and I've pulled it apart so all I need to do is now block these so blocking is where I um stretch them out so they end up being square and at the end of the day I don't really care because it's a blanket like I don't necessarily have to block them out but if I was doing clothing like making a cutting or something like that you need to block it um, once you finished it so that was the first one and it looks pretty similar to the picture so that's a single crochet we'll put it the right way that's a single crochet and there's the picture <laughs> it looks the same all right, the next one that I'm doing, so we've done that one, so we can tick that one off. So the next one is actually using single crochet as well, and this is, um, so it's got a different pattern to it. So it is um, like doing multiple single crochets into the thing. So this is the one that I'm working on at the moment, and I'm about halfway through. I don't care if this takes me for the rest of my days. It's just a way to practice it. So... I've made a couple of mistakes in this one too and I've pulled it back out again but like there's a hole there that I missed so we'll just disregard excuse me we'll just disregard that one I think that's the front let me just have a look at the picture I can never tell anybody else have a problem with that all right um let me just look. No, that'll do. Anyway, that's what it's looking like and as I said the, the yarn is quite fuzzy so that's the bottom and it's quite fuzzy and I've got one hole there that I missed so but you know it's all practice and it looks good like it it feels good too like it's it's gonna be a warm blanket once it's done um, I'm really really happy with it so um, yeah so the next one that I'm, I'm not I've got probably about halfway through that the next one that I'm going to be doing is this one here but the really good thing about this book is it actually has a visual reference for every block, but I can just open it up and see where I'm at. So we've got a pictorial. So I've done, um, that's, so we've got, it starts at number one. So, and it, I just figured like, you know, like even if I did one page and turned that into a blanket, but I mean four inches, I could do them bigger and do that, but these are going to be four inches. So yeah. And like, there's just some awesome patterns on it. But anyway, that's what I've done. I started that. But that's it from me today. I actually don't have a lot else to show you. I haven't really been doing anything. Busy, busy, busy with work and all the rest of it. As I said, the magazine has gone off to the proofreaders. That means that I will have some more time for stitching and crocheting and all the things. All right, so that's it from me today. I hope to see you on the channel. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. If you've made it this far, don't forget to leave me a sewing needle emoji down below. And um, also, if you are new here and you've made it this far, you obviously like what you see. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you're not going to miss out on any of my future uploads. And as always, have a fabulous day. Get lots of stitching in and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.